One Piece is one of the longest-running manga series of all time. Eiichiro Oda's manga has earned plaudits because of his ability to write a magnificent story without any retcons. Another thing that has made Oda popular among the masses is how he is able to put subtle clues in the story that hint towards something big. The One Piece author has used this particular device many times in the story. In One Piece Chapter 1084, Oda introduced a brand new character called Nefertari Lily, who ruled over Alabasta before the formation of the world government. The chapter only revealed her silhouette, but it has sparked many debates within the One Piece community. Many fans believe that she is going to be crucial to the story, but the question is, how? Who is Nefertari Lily? As previously stated, Nefertari Lily ruled over Alabasta before the Void Century. She was one of the 20 monarchs who banded together and created the organization that would come to be known as the world government. Nefertari Lily's reason for joining the other rulers in their quest to obliterate the great kingdom remains unknown. The monarch stated that they wanted to destroy it for safety reasons. As Cobra continued to talk to the five elders, he said that the common knowledge was that Nefertari Lily returned to Alabasta instead of staying in Mary Ajoy like the rest of the rulers. However, Cobra refuted that the information was false, and Lily never returned to Alabasta. In fact, it was her brother who ruled the country. Considering the horrible things done by the world government, it is possible that the organization had a part to play in her disappearance. In either case, Lily seems to have an important role to play in the future. Another interesting thing about Lily is her silhouette. At first glance, it may not seem special, but on closer inspection, it appears to be similar to Emu. Connection to Emu Emu is the true sovereign of the world government. They preside over the empty throne which means that they have control over every single person that falls within the jurisdiction of the world government. Emu was introduced way back in the Reverie arc, where they shocked the readers after the five elders fell to their knees after seeing the ruler of the world. At the moment, there is very limited information available about Emu, but it is plausible to assume that they might have existed before the world government was created. The five elders look up to Emu and treat the ruler of the world with the utmost respect. They ask for guidance and Ima tells them who to kill in order to protect the world government. In Chapter 1084, Emu made a sudden appearance before Nefertari Cobra and the five elders. The latter could not believe that Emu would reveal themselves to Cobra. Instead of stating their reason, Emu instead said, Lily. This implies that Emu is aware of what happened to Lily, or maybe they are Lily. The silhouette of Emu on the last page of the chapter bears an uncanny resemblance to Lily. Both silhouettes have similar eyes and hair. The only difference is the crown on their heads, with Emu's being bigger. It would make sense as to why Lily's name is not mentioned anymore because she has taken up a new alias. Considering most of the world forgot about her existence, she would thrive with her new identity. If Lily is not Emu, then the only other reason she never came back is that she was murdered. It is a well-known fact that the world government does not care about killing other people to protect the organization's false image. It has destroyed many kingdoms that tried to fight back or learn its secrets. If Lily decided to go back to Alabasta after discovering that their goal of destroying the ancient kingdom was nothing but a hoax, the world government would never let her leave. She would have information about the biggest and darkest secret of the world government, and if she were to tell someone else, the organization would fall apart. It also makes sense why the other 19 rulers stayed in Mary Angel. They could have been forced to stay there because the world government could keep an eye on them and protect their secrets. What became of her? Ima may have murdered Lily after she learned of their existence. The 19 swords signify that the rulers were all equal, so no one would sit on the empty throne. The lack of Lily's sword around the throne means either she didn't trust Emu or she crowned herself as the ruler of the world. However, it is more likely that Lily was killed because she refused to play any further part in the world government's domination of the world. Another thing that supports this claim is the existence of a poneglyph in Alabasta. This particular poneglyph contains information about the Pluton, which is one of the ancient weapons. If Lily were Emu, then she would send someone to remove it or make sure that it was buried somewhere no one knew. It wouldn't make sense for her to leave such an important poneglyph in her homeland. And in other news, One Piece, the strongest characters in Hachinosu, ranked. One Piece has picked up the pace, and it looks like it won't be long before 
before the Egghead Island arc reaches its much-awaited conclusion. Aside from the trouble that's been brewing on Egghead, Oda has also revealed other major events taking place all over the One Piece world. After disclosing the winner of Shanks vs. Kid, it seems Oda has shifted his focus to Hachinosu or Full Elite. The island is under the rule of Blackbeard, who gained control of it after ousting Achiku. Hachinosu is turned into a war zone after the arrival of the Marines. There are many powerful characters on display, but who is the strongest character in Hachinosu? Kobe. Kobe is the reason why Garp and other Marines sailed to Hachinosu. He was kidnapped by Blackbeard on Amazon Lily, who wanted to use him as a bargaining chip to strike a deal with the world government. Kobe is currently a Marine captain, but he is above the level of a regular captain. He is able to use all the Rokushiki techniques. What's more, he has exceptional control over Kenbun Shikuhaki, Prince Gruss. Prince Gruss is a Marine Rear Admiral and a member of S.W.O.R.D. Gruss traveled to Hachinosu along with Garp to rescue Kobe. Despite his limited screen time, the Rear Admiral has shown plenty of promise. Prince Gruss ate the Gunyo Gunyo no Mi, which enabled him to manipulate clay at will. Upon his arrival in Hachinosu, Gruss used his powers to create golems made of clay to fight against the pirates. At the moment, the Devil Fruits class remains unknown. Gekko Moria Gekko Moria is the captain of the Thriller Bark Pirates. In his heyday, Gekko Moria was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kaido, which is a huge testament to his power. While Moria's power has definitely dwindled, he is still a force to be reckoned with. Moria possesses the Kage Kage no Mi, a Paramecia-type Devil Fruit that allows him to control shadows. Moria is also able to steal the shadow of another person, causing them to go into a coma, after which he could take his time finishing them off. When Moria came to Hachinosu, Blackbeard invited him to join his crew, but the former Shichibukai declined. San Juan Wolf San Juan Wolf is by far the biggest character in the series. He was locked up by the world government on level 6 of Impel Down, but he escaped along with several other notorious criminals. San Juan Wolf is a giant, which means he has superior physical ability abilities than most characters in the series. San Juan Wolf consumed his Deka Deka no Mi before he was locked inside the prison. His Devil Fruit allows him to increase his size at will. By using its power, San Juan Wolf could grow so massive that he could stand in the sea. Vasco Shot Vasco Shot is the captain of the 8th ship of the Blackbeard Pirates. He joined the crew during the Impel Down arc. Like many other crew members, Vasco Shot looks like an easygoing man, but he is not hesitant to show his malicious side. Vasco Shot is also a devil fruit use, having eaten the Gabu Gabu no Mi. Since he has not used the devil fruit in combat, there is very little information available about its abilities. However, it is most likely related to alcohol. Avalo Pizarro Avalo Pizarro was locked up inside Impel Down's lowest level because of his heinous crimes. He is a malicious individual who does not not care if he has to attack innocent civilians. Pizarro joined the Blackbeard Pirates after surviving an intense brawl inside Impel Down, which suggests that he is a strong individual. Avalo Pizarro possesses the Shima Shima no Mi, which is a Paramecia-type devil fruit. It allows Pizarro to merge his body with an island. Following the Devil Fruit's activation, he can control both natural and artificial structures on the island. Shiryu Shiryu is a talented swordsman, and he has garnered a fearsome reputation during his time in Impel Down. He used to serve the world government, but was locked away for killing too many prisoners. Shiryu was freed during Blackbeard's infiltration of the facility, and it was during this time that he joined the Yonko's crew. Originally, Shiryu didn't have a Devil Fruit, but he received one after the Blackbeard pirates killed Absalom. Shiryu has used the Six Suknomi to land an attack on the unsuspecting Gekko Moria. Considering his past achievements, he is definitely one of the strongest fighters in Hachinosu. Kuzan Kuzan is one of the ten titanic captains of the Blackbeard Pirates. He is unquestionably the strongest member of the Blackbeard Pirates. After the captain himself, Kuzan left the Marines during the time skip and was later asked by Blackbeard to join his crew. As a former Marine Admiral, Kuzan has incredible strength. He possesses the High High Nomi, a Logia-type devil fruit that grants him full control over ice. He can use his devil fruit to freeze other people and immobilize them completely. Kuzan is also able to use the advanced Busashoku Haki, 
which he demonstrated during the Marine Fort arc, Monkey D. Garp. There is zero doubt that Monkey D. Garp is the strongest character in Hachinosu. The legendary Marine traveled to Blackbeard's territory to free Kobe from the clutches of the Blackbeard pirates. When he arrived on the island, he wasted no time attacking the pirates. Garp used Galaxy Impact, an attack imbued with Busa Shoku and Haoshiku Haki, to destroy a large part of the town. Akiji tried to stop Garp in his tracks, but the Vice Admiral sent him crashing into the ground with a single punch. That's a wrap for this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with more amazing videos very soon.